Um, I'm watching Keeping Up With Kel, which is the vlog channel for Kelly. I can't remember her channel's name. And I have to say that I watch, like, a lot of YouTube, and I watch blogs. I, like, watch Judy's Time, which is actually probably my first, um, first, like, vlogging channel that I watched, and I watched a little bit of, uh, the Sacconis, and April, and there's a few others, but I think that I only really relate to, um, uh, with Kelly, because she, I think she's, well, she's very different than I am, but the style of vlogging, I think, suits me better. First of all, she doesn't vlog everywhere, like, out in public, which suits me, because it's incredibly awkward and embarrassing. Not only that, like, I do this in English, and I do live in a country that doesn't speak English, so obviously you get looks, not just the fact that I'm walking around holding a camera, but the fact that I'm also talking in English to the camera. And also, like, I'm not married and have a children or pregnant, so I'm different in that way, and Kelly's like that as well, and I was just thinking, if she can do it, so can I, and so she's inspirational, and I'm just watching her, uh, number 66. And, um, there's a lot of things that I can relate to. She, she reminds me of things that I've gone through. I think she's far younger than I am because she's finishing up college now. So she probably is like 22 or 23. I'm just not sure about that. But I, I just, I just think that if she can do it, I can probably upload more vlogs. i um, try to like do at least two of them a week and maybe talk to you a little bit more because I feel like the only time that I really feel like talking to the camera is like when I'm talking about my fibromyalgia and, and that's kind of stupid because it's not that fibromyalgia it doesn't take a big chunk of my life but there's so much more and I could share feelings and stuff about that and maybe somebody can relate and you know enjoy <laughs> I just actually um one of the things that was putting me off is after my computer kind of crashed um I had a whole bunch of footage, it was kind of scrambled around, and I kept filming, but not so much, because I wasn't editing. When you're not editing, you're not filming as well. And I finally went, and I kind of gathered up thing, a, a few of the fo a few. I gathered all the footage, and I made some organization, and I produced, and I'm doing a lot of this, uh, four videos from January and Feb February, and today's the beginning, today's the 4th of April. Anyways, and I'm going to, uh, I, up I edited them, and I uploaded them, and they're going to be released uh, one every three, four days like that, so they will be spread out. And I'll just see what I have for merch, and April will be more of a, a really kind of a video, uh, maybe doing a little bit more videos for real, because, um, why not? Uh, I have to say that I'm a little bit sad today, because I realized that, um, the kittens that I've been trying to find a home for, I'm not going to be able to find a home for, and at least not in this short time span and the problem is that I can't really take them on adoption days because they still have to be uh what's the word I'm looking for tamed uh and I know they will be eventually but my mother just doesn't have the patience for that because they are kittens and they are kind of destructive um so I'm probably going to take them to what's called a feeding uh, area and I'm looking for somewhere that I know that somebody will take care of them and feed them and hopefully also get fixed because I think the cats get they get fixed are much healthier and happier. Uh, street cats in Israel is a huge problem. I mean, I don't think you really have this in the states. We have cats all over the place. People in general. It's not that Israelis don't like animals, but certain groups within Israel are not big pet lovers and not even pet owners. And that's a shame because also people don't have the awareness, like for instance, fixing dogs and cats. Because there's always going to be cats that, you know, find that need a home and we're not going to be running out of them in any near future. And people still don't fix their damn pets and they think it's cute and that your cat needs to experience being pregnant well that's bullshit and sorry for the language and even the cat you know um the kittens are buddha's brother buddha is my other cat one of my three cats and uh his mother which i call mama is i wanted to get her fixed and she's currently has disappeared from the area 
and I, my mom said that she saw her not too long ago, and I'm really frustrated about that because my mom said she was really pregnant, so she's going to give birth to more kittens, and she's just a wonderful pussycat, and, and I feel so bad. I know I can't save the world, but sometimes you you really wish you could, and that frustrates me so, so, so much. Um, I have this fantasy about winning the lottery and getting a house in one of the, well, it's outside the city, and it's like a more of a, it's, it's houses and not buildings, and it's more of a quiet area, and I just don't know the proper way of describing this kind of, um, of, a, of living, but, and getting a house that would have, uh, in the area, an old, like, uh, where you put cows or something like that so it's 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 still like a fenced in area but it's it's covered and but it's open and big and there I can have all the street cats that don't find homes I can provide them with somewhat of a somewhat of a secure life and maybe like have a project of fixing and neutering cats uh, I don't know it's just it's just sometimes I fantasize about that, and I think that's one of the things that I fantasize about when I think about winning the lottery. I think that winning the lottery, I would have to win a whole bunch more <laughs> than, you know, most jackpots are, and uh, I just frustrating. I, I want to save them all. I want to. I can't, but...